or a family member actually officiate over the wedding. The thing that weirdly astounded me um, at this wedding was that it was a young man who is a rancher. Um, actually, he's not a rancher. He wants to be a rancher. Um, he works on a ranch right now. He doesn't know that he'll ever have enough money to actually be a rancher. Now, <clears throat> I'm originally from Wisconsin, where farming is like a big deal, right? Right. Yeah. Have you ever been out west? <laughs> Ranching Not is a whole different story. The furthest out west I've been has been to Nevada, Las Vegas, and I want to get into California. I definitely want to visit Montana and the Oregons, but uh, I have not been any further. The furthest out west, and that was actually last year that I've been, was uh, Nevada. I've never been even – I've got friends in California and haven't even been out that way. Yeah. Um, So the first thing I had to learn was that ranching and farming are two different things. Farming means that you only do crops. And when you get that far west, there's very little farming that gets done because those hills are too steep and the the ground is not right for growing corn and weed and all that kind of stuff. Ranching, on the other hand, is animals. Now, and it and it's lots and lots and lots of land. So I grew up on a dairy farm with 250 acres, and we thought that was a pretty big farm. The average dairy farm now is about uh, 1,500 acres, maybe. If they're wow. if they're a cropping farm, or they have you know thousands of cows, but those cows aren't free ranging, you know. So out west. I went and visited a ranch. I met about a thousand different animals. <laughs> I have I have all these pictures. Eventually, I'll write a story about this. It it was one of the weirdest farming farming visits I've ever I've ever had, and I've gone to a lot of farms. Um, I got followed by an emu. So you know that TV commercial with the with a mutually mutual I don't know. You know the emu commercial that's on TV right now, and the emu yeah, follows the guy around. Yeah, yeah, they they do that. <laughs> One particular emu, like, came up to me, sniffed me, and then followed me through the entire ranch while I was there. He was, like, next to my right side the entire time. It was the most bizarre feeling ever. Um, emus are really big birds. Um, <laughs> and uh, they had, they own 7,500 acres. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. 7,500 acres. I, 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 I said, you mean 750? And she said, no, 7,500. I'm like, oh, wow. And she said, and we're one of the small small ones. We're one of the small ranchers around here. And I'm like, and that's oh, a small oh, ranch. That's a small ranch. I'm like, 75, I can't, I can't even fathom that because, I mean, I had – one acre when I built when I stupidly built a house in Wisconsin is that I then had to manage like lawn a, a lawn and a you know a yard <laughs> that was one acre I can't imagine I I can't even put that in my head how much land that is you know I knew that wow. I had driven seven miles on a dirt road to get to their door you know <laughs> and I didn't see another building in the process of getting there you know so i do you know it was it was bizarre um sounds like now lisa i want to get to the motorcycle story but i do need to get because dean just texted me we need to get one of our psa slid in there but i definitely want to get to the motorcycle story but before we get to that you should never dare a journalist to look up something because i did look it up apparently that himalayan tribe is the muzu tribe and they apparently hail from the southwestern china area of yunnan and women are the helm of his existence and uh, says that they are the bosses of the house or in con- who are considered complete despite not getting married or living with the fathers of their children. We say fathers because the Muzu women can have multiple partners without the burden of shame from within their community. Stigmas around such lifestyle, however, begin to take shape as one steps out from within the confines of this tribe's whereabouts. So we do know that in certain parts of society, <laughs> Polygamy and polyamory have become popular even in the western parts of society. So it looks like these folks have started living kind of a, and I always mix up which one is the male-oriented one and which one is the female-oriented one. But which one, whichever one of the polys 
is female oriented, it looks like they have already been doing this for a number of years. Oh, they have been doing it for a number of centuries, <laughs> and they ain't changing anytime soon. But you need to do yeah. your PSA, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. D, you ready to slide it in there, and then we'll come back to Lisa. Indeed. Okay, very good. The old renaissance is the new renaissance, standing on tradition while embracing the spirit of distinction. This is the Harlem Brewing Company. Uniquely crafted beer brewed to deliver a taste, a sound, and a feeling that can only be described in one way, Harlem style. So come and take a trip on the A-Train with our Harlem Sugar Hill Golden Ale and our Harlem Renaissance Whiskey, the neighborhood original. All right, so we're back. Uh, back. Yeah, we're back. Okay. And just to look, just to go forward to that conversation, and then uh, we'll come back to the Montana and the motorcycle. But as I'm reading this rest of this article, uh, Dean, you might have to tell your uh, um, single friends, and I'm one of them as well, but those people that are definitely single and don't have marriage as part of their DNA right now, that another novel aspect of the tribe is the concept of walking marriages, where ladies are allowed to indulge in hookups, and have intercourse with male lovers, generally referred to as axia. These unions may or may not result in children, but they nearly never result in marriages. So apparently, this wow. particular culture, they could do hookups all day long. <laughs> I know Isn't that I read an article something? about the fact that they could hook up, but the guy had to be out of her house by 6 in the morning every every time that they did it. <laughs> I, I don't remember where I read that, you know but I what? know that I read it because I would not come up with that one on my own. <laughs> well, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. I know uh, my grandfather, God rest his soul, he used to say stuff that at the time when we were young, it didn't make sense. But he used to always say, you know, if you if you hook up with a young lady and you let the sun beat you home, then that relationship is to be. So, you know, it took a while for us to figure out what the hell that meant. But, you know, don't let the sun beat you home. That's not your girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, so there's there's all that. Um, I'm looking for something while I say this to you because I, I just read some statistics today about how many people are not married in America. And I want to say that it's like, 42% of people, in adults in America, are married. And 50% of those who are not married currently have never been married. Which is kind of an interesting thing, you know. Um, I'm not married either, and I've never been married. And I have friends who were married and got divorced and, and felt like they needed to immediately get married again. And most of my divorced friends definitely want to get married. And a lot of my single friends at the age of, I'm 51, um, and a number of my single friends are very, very honest about the fact that they're like, I'm not sure that I ever want to be married. <laughs> you know, And I'm on the fence of that. If I found somebody who was a lot like me and who liked riding motorbikes, um, I would, I would, I would consider still getting married even at this age. And speaking of motorbikes, I was on the journey this summer was to be on the road for six weeks and to ride through 12 states and to do it all on my 300 cc Kimco. And um, the first two days on the road, it poured, <laughs> and I was tenting most of most of my travels um and uh you know to say the least i was soaked um (laughs) multiple days in a row um and i and i got to michigan and i had an interview with an autoimmune doctor in in detroit and then i rode five hours to a friend's house in batten in battle creek and then the next day I, i rode to flint um and interviewed a lady that has a bridal Salon and is also is also a um, uh, she she is an ordained online ordained minister who does weddings. She's a um, officiant. That's the word that I'm looking for. Then I then I rode to the Christmas town Frank Frankfurt 
and in Michigan. And um, if you're a Christmas person, you got to go to Michigan. Just you got to go. Um, it's it's worth the it's worth the trip to Michigan. Um, Michigan has a lot of really interesting places, actually. But uh, I met a bride and a groom that I interviewed because their wedding is on August 17th, and I knew that I couldn't get back there for the wedding. Two weeks before their original wedding date was, was supposed to be, she was in a T-bone car accident, and the car got T-boned on the driver's side of the car, um, and she was bedridden for two years. And she said that she didn't want to actually get married until she could walk down the aisle. And, um, and the man who is marrying her had a very good job as a mill, I think it was a millwright. Um, and and uh, he ended up quitting his job to be her full-time caretaker. Um, that's, that's a whole different level of love, you know. Yeah. Um, so they are getting married on August 17th, and um, her son, she is, she is still not able to walk on her own, um, but her sons, with her sons at her side, with all the physical therapy she's gone through over the last couple of years, she's actually going to be walking down the aisle with the help of her sons, um, and, uh, and she's going to marry the man who has changed his whole life because her whole life changed. Um, and actually, that, you know, uh, Lisa, Lisa, just one quick question I had to ask you because you raised an interesting point, and I don't know the autoimmune disease you have. And I, when I was reading, I wasn't quite sure whether it's defined as terminal or not. And if it is defined as terminal, um, whether it's your experience or whether it's other experiences with other people that you've been with in terms of photographing them and this wedding project, how have you found it in terms of like people trying to have a wedding with somebody that they feel is terminal and may not be there for the as long as they think they'll be on the planet. And of course, none of us know when our end date is for the most part. But I'm just saying, I don't know if there's considered what you have a terminal disease or not. And if it is, would that be an issue if somebody, if you were to find Mr. Wright? Would they have to realize that you might not be here all that, if for that long? Uh, very good question. Um, and trust me, it's something that I have thought a lot about, and I get a lot of questions on Facebook with, uh, I, be I belong to a face group support group for this disease, and because I'm so tied in with so many medical doctors now, I get a lot of private emails asking me questions, I, you know, that are really interesting. And I, I um, just had this conversation with a guy in India who has this disease, and he's freaking out that, He's 30 years old. He has this disease, and you know, is anybody ever going to want to marry him? And if he does get married and has kids, are his kids going to have this disease? This is not considered a terminal disease anymore. It used to be that the average person would live three to five years after, or th uh, five to ten years after being diagnosed with this disease. Um, in some third world countries. That is still very much the case. Um, here in America, you would really, it depends on who you are. Um, I qualified for that drug study, and that's pretty rare, according to my doctors, um, because other than being a fat chick, I'm actually pretty healthy. Um, I'm not a drinker. I'm not, I've never really been a smoker. So I didn't, I don't have anything else going on, you know, other than Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid, which is an, which is an autoimmune disease that is a thyroid-based disease. And it affects millions of people in America. And the scary thing is, is that they do nothing about it. Um, you know, they'll go to their doctor, they get diagnosed, and then they put on Synthroid or Levothyroxine. And, they, and they're never really told that that drug doesn't actually stop the progression of autoimmune. And so you, what's, what's known in the industry is autoimmune clusters. So if you get one autoimmune disease, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to get a much worse one down the line. And so I'm sure you've heard of rheumatoid arthritis yes. or Crohn's disease or... Uh, Dean has um, Crohn's. Dean has Crohn's? Mm-hmm. That's the other I person do. that's on the line? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's an advanced autoimmune disease. 
So these are all, and you asked if it's terminal or, or what it's called. It's actually called chronic. You, there's no cure.